Press the press the button. It's so scary. Don't yeah, you're on. If it's blinking red, yeah, it's, it's, it's not. It's on. It's on. Yes, say that. You don't even have a job. What is the fun? Yep, we're yep, rolling. All right, Matt, take it away. show you an image about something that's been happening recently. Wait, let me know if you know what it is. What do you think this is from? Gaza. That's right, Gaza. So there's been some, you know, attacks from Gaza between Gaza Strip and Israel. And it's been honestly a tragedy. Um, first of all, the group called Hamas has been entering into Israel, kind of attacking them and uh, attacking civilians, throwing missile, through missiles. And Israel responded by sending missiles back to Gaza. And they ended up destroying a lot of like civilian homes and residential homes. And I'm not here to talk to you about the events here, but I just did a bring up a good point. It's like, why does suffering happen? Why is there suffering in the world? And this is hard for everyone to answer because it's weighed on our hearts, but it's especially harder for in a Christian concept because we believe as Christians about a good God. And this has been a problem that's been trying to address philosophically for a long time. And there's a dilemma, it's called the problem of good evil. And it kind of goes like this, a good God and an all powerful God would not create evil. So if there's evil in the world, therefore God is not either all powerful or not all good. And this is a kind of a hard question that stumped a lot of theologians. A lot has been written, but a lot of it doesn't seem too satisfactory. So today, I'm trying my best to try to help you see, see this in a new light and try to have an open mind, even if you aren't a Christian, even if you don't any, like any of this. Try to keep an open mind, and I hope from that in this you can learn, at least from a new perspective. So to start off, why is there evil in the world? Well, the first part is that it doesn't come from God. In the beginning, God created a good creation according to Christian theology, a creation where there's no evil, and a creation where there's no death or sin. So what went wrong, you might add? Well, at least in the Bible, it says that Adam and Eve sinned. They ate from a, the apple of the knowledge of tree and good and evil. What does that represent? It represents our choice for free will. The reason why there is evil, at least from a Christian idea, is that God created the choice for you to do good or bad. This is free will. Now, you may wonder, if God, can God just like create free will but also goodness? Well, I don't think that's actually possible. There's one theologian called Alvin Plantega. And he believed that those two were actually unreconcilable because if there is the choice of free will, there has to be the choice for evil. You can't have free will without the choice to do evil. It's just those two are unreconcilable. So there is a sense where this is called the free will argument, which has been used by a lot of theologians. So it seems like God is actually a good thing to allow us to have free will. Otherwise, we would be just be robots, incapable of loving people, incapable of choosing for ourselves. So it seems to be almost necessary that there is free will. But, uh, okay, you might be asking, okay, so let's say there is free will. Sure, evil exists. Well, why doesn't God interfere? Like, just what happened with Israel, like, all these evil things are happening. God doesn't, like, step in to solve these problems. Why doesn't he do that? Well, one answer for this is that, let's imagine that God did do this. How often should he come in and stop people from doing with anything? I mean, if he does it for one situation, why not every other one? And this has been known in uh, theology as kind of playpen freedom, because we're in a playpen, we can't really move out because the second we do anything wrong, God will step in to do something. So, if this was the case, it almost seems like we don't have free will anyways. Like, if God just wouldn't stop you the second you do something, we don't really have free will, and we don't have responsibility on ourselves. If we do that, the responsibility is kind of on God, but we don't take moral, like, responsibility for our actions. Another thing to consider also, at least from the biblical perspective, is that God already tried to deal with evil from the flood. In this story, um, God basically judges the entire world. Only eight people are saved. The rest of the world, God deems is too evil, so he destroys them all. You might be thinking, okay, God destroyed the world, so what happened? Well, evil came back right after. The people who were good became evil again. So even God stepping in the judge won't actually solve the problem. And from a Christian theology, this is not a problem because it seems like the only way for God to actually do something is to actually transform us. We don't believe like he, his judgment will save humanity. Otherwise, God just would have stopped and created stop with humanity after the flood, but we believe that at least get the, the correct answer is like to transform the heart. Only when we're like transformed by God can we be, have good in the world. So, there's another point I want to leave you with is that God, even though there is evil, can work it for good, and that bad things can lead to good. Let's imagine this. A baby is in the womb. It's really warm in there. It's perfect, perfect conditions, you know, getting the nutrients from the mother. It's perfect condition. Why would you want to leave? And then suddenly, Bang. White light, you're born into the world. Suddenly you're in a cold environment, you can't see the light, you're resistant to the light. You're like, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Yet, we see it from the outside, we're like, this is, this is a joyous moment, a new infant born, born into the world. But you can't stay in that part of comfort forever. The infant couldn't do anything if it just stayed in the womb. So it's saying, well, we need, we need to grow, we need harder situations in order to grow. And in general, you'll see this in like, 
in the culture too, like any like LeBron with his I Promise schools, people who come from hard backgrounds end up doing the most good because they see the problems in the world and want to change it. So it's almost like these harder things, they push us to want to do good. So in general, um, there's also God works things out for our good, the Bible says. For instance, the cross. In Christian theology, Jesus is the Son of God who died for our sins. And from the outside, this should be looked, seen as the worst possible thing. Like, they killed God. Like, they killed God's Son. Something that should have been the worst thing in the world, God was able to make it into the best thing in the world, providing, you know, salvation for us. Um, another example is, like, the apostles being persecuted. It should have been bad, but that allowed him to spread across to the nations. So God can turn bad things into good. And even with our own lives, things may seem bad, but at least, and God doesn't make things happen just because they're bad, but God is able to make